Yo, what's going on everybody? So Boruto episode 120 is done and yo, what we've all been waiting for is finally here. Sasuke Uchiha has finally returned to the Boruto series. And I know for a lot of people, a lot of people like to watch the series because they want to see what Naruto and Sasuke are up to as adults. And one thing I do like, I do like the fact that we're seeing Sasuke play more of the Jiraiya role with his interactions with Boruto. I thought it was pretty cool how early on in the episode Boruto is really channeling Naruto from the early part of the story where Naruto was getting very frustrated in some of those filler episodes that Jiraiya wasn't actually coming to train him he was always waiting to train like in the manga when Jiraiya said he was training Naruto they literally left at the end of the chapter whereas the anime the anime stretched it out for over 80 episodes so for Boruto saying I really want to see Sasuke I'm waiting for him and Sarada saying like well my dad's always out on these different missions he's basically camping by himself you're not going to be able to see him i thought that was pretty cool and i thought that was really good foreshadowing setting up the fact that sasuke because he's away on these dangerous missions boruto is going to have to get a lot stronger before he even begins to train with sasuke for an extended period of time in the foreshadowing this also set up for the very end of the episode i do like that i thought that that was done pretty well now the other thing i will say is that i've been reading some of the comments about this episode and everyone you know rightfully so is very excited about the fact that Urashiki's back that Sasuke is fighting against him it really looks as if Urashiki was pressuring Sasuke and Gara at one point he's calling them weak but one thing that really stood out is that some people are saying well why is Teneri working with Urashiki and I think it's because that line where Urashiki says well these puppets Teneri gave me are really really useful now I think people are starting to forget because it's been over a year but but if you go back to the very start of the versus Momoshiki arc, you actually see that Urashiki placed Teneri inside of that dragon palace and basically he's sealed away there for a thousand years until somebody's able to free him. So I just want to kind of clear that up before I get into the actual review because I, again, I've read a lot of comments, a lot of people are getting that confused. Teneri is not back being bad. That's not the case. This is just one of those situations where he got his ass handed to him and Urashiki took, you know, rightfully took his puppets. They're his to use now. So with all that being said, I gotta say, man, this episode this episode works for a few different reasons. It works as a introduction to the main arc. I do like that, okay? I do like the fact that it starts out with Boruto whining about the fact that Sasuke is not taking him on training and Sarada has to explain the responsibilities of her father. And then we see more foreshadowing being set up when she could die saying, well, I've gotta go to the land of wind because my mom wants me to visit my uncle and visit uh, more people in our family. And so I, I do like that because what that's showing us is that when Boruto and Shinki are placed on their mission where they're working with Konkuro, if anything happens to Konkuro, one of the things you'll end up seeing is that because Shikadai is gonna be in the land of wind, more than likely Shikadai, because he's a Chunin, is probably going to take over the charge of protecting the One Tail. So that's another bit of foreshadowing that you can tell Kodachi planted this. You can actually tell that Kodachi, when it came to supervising in this arc was very hands-on because early on in the episode within the first five minutes you see the blueprints of his writing style all throughout this episode so this was another thing where it's starting to trend in the right direction i'm really enjoying this and one thing that i didn't particularly care for but i get why they decided to do this was when you have boruto lying trying to get his way out of going on that camping trip with his grandpa now i totally understand it okay boruto wants to go see sasuke he wants to train with him i get that i applaud him for that but you know how we kind of got there that was something where you know with boruto's character because of how intelligent he is i would think that he could come up with a better excuse than that but i mean obviously it works because hinata doesn't think twice okay she doesn't think twice when he says well i'm gonna be staying with mitsuki we're gonna be camping there's a training mission and oh don't worry about taking care of me sarda's gonna be there she's super responsible and when it comes to hinata hinata almost went to go check with mitsuki to check on it but 
but it's one of those things where she's like, oh, well, I guess I can trust my son. And that's one thing where I kind of went back and forth on because Hinata, at the end of the day, Hinata's still a shinobi, okay? Hinata should be able to pick up on the subtle changes in her style, but at the same time, once again, I get what Karachi's trying to do here, which is because Hinata has raised Boruto since birth, because of that, because she does know Boruto does have a mischievous streak, but for the most part, since the versus Momoshiki arc, Boruto's begun to change. She's giving him the benefit of the doubt because she knows as well as anybody else that at any given moment, Shinobi can be called off for things like training missions and everything. So, I mean, it's something where she's like, okay, well, you know, maybe he didn't tell Naruto about it. That's okay. I'll totally buy into it. So, I, I, I go back and forth on it because it's one of those things where I kind of felt like that was a little bit of overkill. But what I really like is, is how Kodachi, when you get to Isago and her father, that's another tie back. Because whereas Boruto lied to his family to go on that training mission, at the same time, Boruto's protecting family bonds. And so that's what I really like about that is how a little small thing like that actually ends up tying in indirectly through Boruto's interactions with the family he meets on the outskirts of the Hidden Sandville. So, and one thing I've seen on comments online is that, you know, some people feel as if the Isago plotline probably could have been dropped. And the thing I will say with this is, is I agree by disagree. And I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that first. Okay. Now, on one hand, I totally get it why people say, well, that was just filler meant to pad out the episode. We could have used that time to get to Sasuke versus Urashiki and kind of flesh that fight out more. I, I get that part. But see, what I like about this is when Boruto speaking with Isago's father, he ends up telling him like, hey, you know, many years ago, you probably weren't told about this. You probably might not know about this, but the Force Shinobi World War was a very chaotic war. It was very hectic. And I, one thing I've seen people say is that, well, why is he saying that his village was burned to the ground? Well, the Shinobi World War didn't take place anywhere near the Land of Wind. This is just a big plot hole. I'll, I'll, I'll address that here, okay? And I'm going to tell you why this part works. But in order to understand it, you have to look at some background information, okay? So one thing that the episode does kind of broach on is the fact that it tells us that he moved out with his daughter daughter once she was born very far away and he's in that isolated area but the shinobi world war takes place in the land of hot water and it takes place in the land of frost and the shinobi headquarters is located right at the border of the lightning country okay so what you have to look at is when he says that we need to burn down any nearby villages where the enemy can be hiding and it's to protect the shinobi hq that in itself should tell you that he wasn't from the land of wind he might have more than likely either been from that border at the land of frost or most likely been a shinobi or been a civilian from the land of lightning and after the shinobi world war he relocated and if you read the novels one thing that you find out is the fact that a lot of shinobi especially those who lived on that border a lot of civilians left and they never went back to the villages because they didn't have anything to return to because so much stuff was destroyed so what the borsa anime is doing is it's doing something that it's done on multiple occasions which is it's assuming that you as the viewer have done your due diligence and you've read the different Naruto novels because this is yet another instance where there's information that is being slightly hinted at that comes directly from these novels and you wouldn't be aware of it unless you read the novels or unless you read the Konoha chronology that breaks down the events that happens before Boruto Naruto Next Generation so that's one of those moments where as a novel reader I caught quite a few things that the anime was kind of tipping his hat to and and so one thing I did like about that is how this guy because of what happens during the Force Shinobi World War because of everything he lost he didn't just cross over a few different countries he crossed over several countries and then he went to the outskirts of the hidden sand village in order to stay away from Shinobi so that's something I like he went to the harshest of conditions because because it just shows that sometimes when people go through a traumatic experience they go all the way to extreme so i personally enjoy that little bit of a subplot because again it ties into more of the lore but the other thing that it shows you is that when it comes to teaching the next generation about what happened in the previous war they've basically skipped over a lot of details and that's not something that's unlike what happens in history books because i know for myself okay when i first graduated college a few years ago and i started teaching okay i taught for a very brief period of time like my 
first year out of college, I graduated in 2015, and my first year out of college, I took on a teaching job. When I looked through the history books, there were a few different events that when the history books touched on them, they kind of glossed over them because it's one of those things where you want to kind of protect the innocence of children, and yet at the same time, it's one of those things where you do want them to know about the past, but you don't want them to know the full details. And I personally think that's irresponsible. So when it comes to this, you see that reflected in how Konoha has decided to teach the next generation when it comes to the academy because that explains why you have moments why people don't understand just how powerful Naruto was, how they don't understand the true vigors of what happened during the Force Shinobi World War and Boruto's looking completely shocked at all this stuff and yet we as the Naruto fans, that's something we could definitely see happening. We could see the Raikage taking that stance because he got named the leader of the Shinobi Alliance after Donzo just butchered everything by using Kotomasu Kami during the Five Kage Summit. And so when you look at that, that's totally a fourth Raikage type move where he just says, screw it. We're not leaving anything to chance. And, and all those people in the land of hot water slash the land of steam and the people in the land of frost were relocated to Konoha. And so that's one of those things where you're seeing the effect on the civilian when it comes to the war. And so I, I did like that. I did like the fact that, you know, Boruto's able to, you know, stop those crooks who are trying to take the land and kind of push them out under false pretenses. And I, I like the little moment where Isago manages to bite one of our captives because, as you guys know, I absolutely hate the damsel in distress. I hate that. I, I absolutely hate that. So that was one of the things I was glad to kind of see that. And I like that moment where Boruto's saying, well, maybe I'll tell Uncle Gar about this. That's another plot thread where I think that it might not go anywhere, but it's nice to see how Boruto is acknowledging like, yeah, I am the son of Hokage, the Kaze Kage and my dad are pretty close friends. I could probably resolve this if I wanted to. So, I mean, that was that was really nice. And at the same time, Boruto kind of pushes that off and says, well, he's just a friend of a friend. So he's trying to downplay his importance. And that's one of those things where it makes me wonder, is Isago's father going to have another role coming forward in the future of this arc? Now, with all that being said, let's talk about what you guys all came here for, which is Sasuke versus Urashiki. Now, this is one of those times where, you know, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back because, you know, I mean, a few weeks ago, I, I said, like, I definitely think in the near future that we are going to get a Sasuke versus Urashiki battle simply for the fact that they've gone out of their way to kind of foreshadow and just kind of drop it in there. And that's one of those plot threads that has to be addressed before we get to the manga continuity. I know that Kodachi has said that uh, Urashiki will eventually pop up in the manga, but since he isn't in the manga currently and because plans can change, it's one of those things where, okay, he needs to be wrapped up. He needs to be wrapped up at some point. So I do like the fact that we do see the very brief fight where Gara and Sasuke are being pressured, where that fishing hook kind of shoots through. And as you start seeing them start to get serious, right? Boruto happens to stumble across the scene and Boruto sees the Matarasu flames, which again, it just shows you that the battle that took place beforehand, it was absolutely chaotic because you see Amaterasu all over the place. You see it all over the place. And when Boruto gets there, you see Sasuke immediately change. You see him immediately change and he's like, Boruto, what are you doing here? Why are you here? This guy's completely out of your league. You cannot add any value to the situation. You see Sasuke more than once deflecting the attacks keeping Boruto safe and while he's spending that time arguing with Boruto you see Urashiki just hit this dude with his chakra fishing rod and he takes out some of Sasuke's chakra now what I like about this is it goes back to what I was telling you earlier on in the review which is before Boruto can actually train with Sasuke he's gonna have to get a lot stronger because Sasuke takes on dangerous missions essentially Sasuke is on one long ass s-rank mission after the other it's almost like if you look at fairy tale Sasuke's on a hundred year quest he can obviously complete it a lot sooner but he's gone for months to years at a time so I, I really like this I really like this moment right here I really like that but at the same time I, I know some people are pissed off that you know Sasuke got nerfed we didn't get to see a full Sasuke versus Urashiki fight but what they're doing is they're removing Sasuke very briefly from this arc okay Urashiki has sent him to another dimension and yet once Sasuke is able to recover his chakras Sasuke's going to be able to escape and you'll probably get Sasuke versus Urashiki as the climax of this arc but in the meantime 
Boruto not having that protection there not having that protection there Sasuke it adds more conflict to the story because we as the viewers got to see Boruto with a little bit of hope and now that hope is just snatched away and now there's a serious situation where you have Teneri's puppets coming after them because they're trying to get the one tail so I mean this is this is really good this is a really nice start to the arc but I want to know from you guys okay I really want to know from you guys what are your thoughts about the potential of the Sasuke versus Urashiki battle in the future but as always guys if you like anything I had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching all into the end have an awesome day guys